Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. Pianist Robert Glasper really has been able to communicate the worlds of hip hop, jazz, R&B, soul, and gospel into the musical vernacular of his repertoire. His latest Blue Note record CD, Double Booked, pays tribute to some of the music that he enjoys listening to as well as the traditional trio. project that <laughs> consists of trio as well as I guess experimental funk soul hip hop yes yes it's a uh, it's mainly like hip hop so um, actually like world music or, um, you know alternative rock all kinds of stuff actually I wouldn't just put those two labels on it's like it go we go anywhere any 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 anywhere <laughs> so it's basically it just shows the halves of me and what i'm doing you know, the different parts of music that i like you know what i mean it's on one record musically what are you saying because i mean there's radiohead interpretation and there's uh herbie hancock i mean you're all over the place yeah there's herbie hancock dilla radiohead all kinds of things we um we're just saying music is music basically you know what i'm saying we're ch children of the music and for us there's no label and there's no there's no, uh, we don't fall short in any of it. It's like authentic, authenticity at its best. How hard is it for you to be a musician, a purist, and walk the lines of hip hop, soul, and R&B? Um, I wouldn't say I'm a, you mean purist in the form, in the terms of like, the traditional, trio. the traditional trio. See, I'm not a purist. That's the thing. I'm not a. I'm not a purist. I love. I love a lot of things. So you know, I'm, to me, then when you're when you're when you're some when you're like kind of set in one thing and don't want to check out anything else, that kind of goes against what jazz is about anyway. You know what I mean? Because jazz wasn't meant to be one thing. That's why there's so many different kinds of jazz and it has so many stages because it had stages because cats. You know played one way and then they incorporated other kind of music or checked out some other shit and then they're like, oh, let's put that in there and then it became this. And then it became hard pop and then it became free jazz and then it became, you know, a, had some electric stuff in it so it became fusion. And then, you know, so it keeps growing, which it's supposed to do is music. You know, it's supposed to keep growing. So when cats say, oh man, you gotta take it back to the original, to the swing, man, you gotta do this. Like, no, if Charlie Parker came back to life today, and turned around and saw cats playing the same shit he playing, they'd be like, what did I die for? What was I on earth for? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, progress, move on. You know what I mean? It's, well, I think we're the only music that do that. Jazz musicians like have a tendency to like keep looking so far in the past that, that that's why the music doesn't, it's hard for it to go anywhere. You know what I mean? Because everybody's like, well, you got to check out. No, nobody do that in R&B. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's like, oh, telling Chris Brown he got to sound like Marvin Gaye or Al Green. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that. Like, why in jazz is it like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, why do we always have to go back 100 years? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we don't have to. And we don't have to sound like that person. You know, it's, it's moving. It's, it's doing what it's doing. Now, I'm not saying don't study. You know what I'm saying? Study. And, and, and know as much as you can. But it's just, you know, I, I hate people don't want to hear anything new or hear it progress. You know, even if it does, does something that I don't like. Like hip hop, for instance. I don't like all hip hop. There's some hip hop I hate. You know, 
but it's moving and it's progressing. The stuff I hate is new, and I have I didn't hear it ten years ago. So hell, it's moving. You know what I'm saying? It's like a child. Children are gonna grow, and they're gonna do stuff you don't like, <laughs> and they're gonna do stuff you do like. So it's love hate. You know, it's, it is what it is. So, you know, I I think that that's very very mature what you're saying because I just can't stand how the jazz police has tried to stay away or stray away from what you're trying to say musically. I mean, it's the same with Miles, the same with Tony Williams, the same with that whole eclectic 70s fusion rock. Yeah, and then, and then people wonder why, like, uh, jazz is overlooked. You know, it's, uh, it's only 1% of the music market. Nobody cares, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, because we're still living in 1950. What do you think? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't expect a 20-year-old right now who doesn't listen to jazz to listen to it if if you're still trying to sound like Charlie Parker or trying to sound like all these cats back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Jazz is supposed to be a reflection of the music of, of what's happening in your society at that time. For, to me, that's the one of the definitions kind of it. like it's the music that reflects the generation and the and the society at a certain time period. You should be able to listen to it and be like kind of know the era, era you know what I mean? So I'm playing music of my time period, of my generation, which is why young people listen to me. You know what I mean? So th more people need to do that so we can get on the map. But every other music does it except us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Classical music probably, but that's a whole other thing. But every other music does it. Country music progresses and moves on. R&B, hip hop, you know, that's why they have more attention. That's why they get more press. That's why they're, that's why they're, we're not, they're, they're not hidden like we are. We're like a secret society. Like, no jazz, you know, like, <laughs> like we're damn country club or something. Like you got to be a member <laughs> or some shit. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, you know, we're the coolest music. We're the first like cool ass music. You know what I'm saying? We're the dope. We're the we're the cool ones. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm trying to bring that back. You know, the Sydney Portier of yeah. jazz. The Sydney Portier of jazz. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, all that. You know, it's just like you know. That's why you come to my show. You'll see. You know. You don't know who you'll see. You know. Last night John Mayer was here. You know what I'm saying? You'll come to my show, you'll see most F, you'll see Common, you'll see an actor or two, you know, whoever. That's because my music is a reflection of the society today, so it means something to a lot of other people outside of the genre, outside of music in general, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's why I do that. And not, it's nothing I'm trying to do purposely for that. That's just, I just am of my generation now, and I don't hide it and try to be of a gen another generation I wasn't even around for. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense to me. talk about your trio mm -hmm. your trio has been with you for a, a good minute and Kendrick is playing tonight, is playing tonight. yeah I, I have a few uh, within my trio there's like Chris Dave is the normal drummer and then there's Kendrick and Jemire who switch off so between those three of my drummers and I use uh, Alan Hampton on bass or Vicente Archer between those two so between that whole mix I love all of them guys because they all bring something different and every night something different and they all live and breathe all kinds of music, you know what I mean? So that's the main thing with my trio. It's not like you have to just be a jazz head. You have to be a love hip hop. You have to love rock music. You have to love R&B. You have to love all kinds of things and because we're going to probably go into all that kind of stuff organically. It just happens. So that's why I love all those guys because they can, you can literally go anywhere, anywhere you want. We're like like minds, you know what I mean? So I feel like I'm playing with myself in a way. Pause. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> so it's really kind of the difference between your your other unit versus this unit. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I mean, really, it's com- it's almost this. There's a common thread, and the common thread is, you know, it can go anywhere and catch love all kinds of music. The only the, the difference with the other experiment band is that it's the instrumentation is different. For one, I, I play a lot of Rhodes on other thing and and piano. And Derek Hodge plays bass on the in my experiment band. He has he plays electric bass in that. And um Casey Benjamin on alto sax and vocorder. So we do a lot of stuff with lyrics and vocorder stuff. That's really killing. So we can kinda you can kinda take it in different different places than you can trio because when you have something with lyrics, you know what I mean, and do it like that. So But in, in at the end of the day, you know, there are a lot of common that common thing too, so Texas. Your mother was one of your musical providers as well as your mentors. You got exposed to piano pretty late, like 11, 12 years old. Yeah, 12 years old. I mean, the piano was always in the house, but I was more into sports and stuff, so I kind of just ignored it. And, didn't, you know, and then I started twinkling on it a little bit when I was 10, kind of picking up songs off the radio a little bit. And then I just really kind of picked it up for real for real around 12 years old. Started playing in church around 14, 15. And then I went to the performing arts high school. Um, when I was 16, and that's where I kind of really picked up jazz and stuff like that. Um, so I was at, the, at that high school for three years, then got a scholarship to come to New York to go to college, and then I've been here ever since. So, so musically, you who who were the guys that motivated and moved you as a pianist and just as a musician? A lot of people. I stopped saying it online. I I, I stopped saying it in public. Who who who, who they are. For just for the reason that I want people to come and listen and tell me who they hear, because a lot of people have a tendency, once I say who I like, they come with it listening for that person that I said all the time that happened, that used to happen. But now you have to come with an honest ear, because I'm not going to tell you. So you tell me after the show who you hear. And if you can't tell me, that means you, I may have my own voice, perhaps. But everybody has their influences. You know, I have a few, a lot, you know, but I stopped saying it. So you have to listen for yourself. <laughs> you know, Robert, I come up of the hip hop era. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the go I call it the golden age, circa eighty six to ninety nine. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I really admire about you is the fact that you have, like you said earlier, you've taken all genres of music and made it your own because it's something that you live. It's something that you can identify with. Mm-hmm. How has becoming a music director and playing for artists like Most Def and Talib Kweli and even the further extreme of Maxwell, mm-hmm. how's that enhanced your musical palette as a musician? It just um, quenches my thirst of all the stuff I like, I love. You know what I mean? It's something I'm extremely comfortable with. I think when you once you grow up in church, church has some, a lot of stuff comes from church, you know what I'm saying? So when you play pop music, when you play R&B music, when you play hip hop, a lot of that stuff, just the harmonies and stuff, is really from church anyway. So that's what you know. That's why a lot of them gigs are the church cats are on them gigs a lot of times because it's so right in there. You know what I mean? So it just quenches my thirst to play other things and play with other people, and it's great. You know, it's it's, it's totally great. It's different lessons with different people. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace Report, and live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank. 
Robert Glass before his time, as well as the staff here at the Jazz Standard. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column, as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Peace.